So are we still making the doc series? Or? Yes, we should definitely. Okay. Still, so. <laughs> I was just I, checking. I think, I I, this might not be the best time. No, no, but. no. I think this, we should seal it in blood. Yeah. All right. Uh. <laughs> Let me tell you a crazy story about how we got here. back, I visited my filmmaking idol, Ryan Booth, in New York City. All right, we're in New York, Brooklyn, more exactly. Uh, did a screening of uh, Itis. Super fun seeing all you guys. Um, and now we're gonna hang out with somebody who has inspired my journey quite a bit. What's up? How's it going, man? How's it going? Good to see you. How's it going? Good, Good. how are you? If you don't know Ryan, he's one of the most talented yet humble guys I know, and he played a huge role in inspiring me when I was starting out in filmmaking. He was one of the first what I call new school filmmakers that I saw in line with the rise of digital filmmaking. He could pick up any camera like a 5D and by himself make magic. It's no surprise that nowadays he's a big time director in New York City making big things like this NBA Finals commercial. Yeah, now you know why I've always looked up to him. And we were having a great time planning our future dream projects and how we were gonna make them happen. Awesome conversations, excitement was in the air, eating good food, Ryan was showing us around New York City. Okay, so the two like, uh indicators that you've lived in New York long enough that, dude, that guy just dropped us a sweater. <laughs> dude, that's is that, that's, that, that's New this, York right this, there? <laughs> do you want the a $200? Yeah, the third sign. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they just, they just rained it. down in they New York. <laughs> the two markers that you've lived in New York that you're like starting to settle into living in New York is you can pop out of a subway station and just start walking exactly the, the direction you need to go. You don't come up and go, uh, <laughs> this way, no, what block am where I? Where am I? And then the second is, is that in any given neighborhood, you know where you could find a bathroom if you need it. <laughs> Which is not, Very not, important. To be taken, not to be taken lightly. I can tell you, right over there, <laughs> one right over there. Grabbed some coffee and we hopped on some bikes to head back to Ryan's office. He was super gracious and gave me the nice city bike and he took the one that was a bit older. We're biking down Broadway and Ryan's like, oh, hey, that's Casey Neistat's office right there. And I was like, oh, cool. I've never actually seen it in person. And as I turn back to Ryan, I just see him starting to go over his handlebars as if he hit some sort of like invisible wall. And it just keeps going until he full on falls over the handlebars, body slams the ground, slices his knuckles. Uh, Ryan just took a hard, hard pin. <sighs> this, is, this is not how I was expecting this day to go. Oh, he just, the bike folded on him and it would just end over. It was scary there. I was real worried. He dodged the bullet, but it's still looking pretty rough. Worst part is somehow he has dog shite all over him too. What the heck? New York, you're tough, man. I don't know if I'm cut out for this. And as if it couldn't get any worse, he fell into dog poop. There's dog poop all over his jacket, his side, and all in his freshly sliced knuckles. I kid you not, he ate shite in dog shite. <laughs> Over under on it being broken. <laughs> you think it's broken. I'll definitely think it's, think it's broken. That, that's, that's my right. guess, yeah. What happened was that the mud guard got stuck in his front tire and made him flip over and I felt so bad for him. And we were trying to figure out what to do. We were trying to get his cuts cleaned out from all the dog shite. But the story gets even crazier. So obviously I was like, we can't take bikes back to your office. Let's take an Uber. So we hop into an Uber and as we're getting on to the Brooklyn Bridge, our Uber driver decides to start road raging with the car next to us. You know that situation where there's like two cars trying to get into one lane and we were not the ones in the lane. Our Uber driver was trying to get in the lane and neither wanted to give way and they're doing this this thing and honking back and forth and and 
the guys in the next car were not the kind of guys that I would personally want to mess with. Um, they kind of looked a little bit menacing. The guy in the, the passenger seat was just all the way leaning back and neither is giving way. And the guys start yelling at our Uber driver, like what you want to fight kind of stuff. And I, I didn't want to film it because I literally thought we were going to get shot or something like that. And then next thing you know, I'm filming Ryan, but I'm watching what's happened. And I just see them driving by. The guy in the passenger side gets out the window. Maybe let's just let him through. Yeah, just let him go. Just let him go. Yeah. I wouldn't. And he full on sucker punches the mirror, just smashing it to pieces. And all I remember is him just kind of like looking back and at his knuckles. And you could tell that he probably either sliced them bad or broke them. Ryan, I'm not, I'm not cut out for this. I'm too soft. Too you soft. Get your anxiety up. <laughs> I'm good, man. It's all good. They drive off, and our Uber driver decides to park his car in the middle of the Brooklyn Bridge. We're sitting there, and we're kind of like, um, maybe we should just go. And he's like, I'm not going anywhere until the cops come here. And we're like, I don't think the cops are gonna care about your mirror. Well, my friend has uh, his hands yeah, kind of busted up, and so we need to. We'd like to get to. <laughs> as fast as possible. And finally he gets a cop and obviously the cops don't care. <laughs> and we're kind of trying to convince them like, hey, we have our friends hurt here. Like, can we get going? Finally, we get going back to Ryan's office. And the best part is he's trying to get sympathy from us because it's his first day on the job. And all I'm thinking is, well, maybe you shouldn't have been road raging and you should have just let him go. Give us a... Full New York City experience. I know, man. This is yeah. not actually the experience of New York City. I will say, like, <laughs> this, this is a this is true tourist. Turn, <laughs> this is the turn and the pearl. Yeah. Yeah. NYC, you are wild. And Ryan Booth, you're a boss. Ryan handled it all just so well that it just made me like and respect him even more, which I didn't know was possible. He's calling his wife. It's going to be an I told you so moment, I think. This office is incredible, though. And yes, me and Ryan are working on a doc series and a feature film, and we need your help. Was that an I told you so, or? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but first, I need to ask Ryan a really important question. How's it feeling? Getting better. <laughs> I, can, I can move. I have, uh, the stitches are out. No more stitches. Uh, when I shake people's hands, it doesn't send me into like a uh, catastrophic pain anymore. <laughs> That's uh, good. That's all positive. Uh, you guys might have just noticed we're not in New York anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> and we switch coasts. Yeah, we yeah. switch, you know, casual being in New York, <laughs> then hang out in LA. Right. Okay, I have, I have one question for you. What's the question? Why are you, why do you want to be a part of this project? I think that I've spent the last couple years more than a couple, the last many years of my career, the last five years of my career, primarily directing like big TV commercials. And the further up I go and the bigger the opportunities get, the more I feel like I, the part of myself that just wants to pick up a camera and go do the thing, like is like a muscle that is atrophying, you know? Everything is this big structured whole rigmarole and like, I still, I came up like picking, I literally started by picking up a 5D and shooting my friends. Um, and like, I feel like that is, there is a source of like vitality and creative energy for me that comes from picking up a camera and shooting something. And when I see my favorite YouTubers, when I see Maddie, when I hear and talk about these projects, like the idea of just grabbing a camera and like going and being creative without the kind of structural limitations that come with large-scale filmmaking, I get really excited. It's funny because uh, you are one of the one of the biggest inspirations for me because of that factor. Yeah. That you could pick up any camera and you would make it look like you had an insane budget and crew and it, it just like, I wanted to do that. Yeah. And now, I don't know, this is kind of a nice full circle moment right That's here. That's awesome. My goal in big-scale filmmaking has been to, and I just did a big project. I just did this NBA Finals. Biggest commercial. project of your life. Biggest Congrats. project of my career. It's everywhere. And like, it's been amazing because my goal with that 
was that when you see those scenes, it should feel like you could have just picked up a kid, that somebody just picked up a camera and just shot the thing, right? That you just kind of, and so that's been my goal, even though there, nobody just picked up a camera and shot anything. Every decision, every beat was like chosen ahead of time, built and structured for that moment. And yet, like I've been trying to make my big work feel loose. Um, and so, so that I can then step back out and just pick up a camera and go, and it all feels cohesive. So whether we're doing big stuff or we're doing stuff where it's just us, um, that it all feels like it's made in the same, with the same intention and the same spirit. The coolest part for me is that we've come full circle of me idolizing and being inspired by him to learn and grow as a filmmaker and leading me to eventually building this channel. And now he's inspired by me to just get out there and make the things he's always wanted to make. Instead of just grinding commercials day after day, pitching job after job, and waiting to win the filmmaking lottery and hope that someday he would get to make those projects. And I want to be a part of helping as many creatives as possible to make the projects that they've always wanted to make. Ryan is currently trying to get his first feature film made and I want to document that whole process and help him make that. But first, we got to get warmed up with a doc series. So what's the doc series? We're coming together to reboot the Being series. What it's like being blank YouTuber. It's the real BTS of what it takes to be a YouTuber and what it's like being them. Because I've always been really fascinated with the idea of what is, what is it actually like being that person? What is their daily life like? I started the series, I did an episode on Jesse Driftwood, loved it, it was so much fun. I think you guys liked it a lot. And then I did another one on Potato Jet Gene. So much fun, I really enjoyed it. And then the world got put on pause for a while and I haven't gotten back to it yet. And I've been trying to think of how should I bring it back? There's some things I wanna change in it. Who should I work with? And Ryan Booth, I can't think of a better person to work with on the Being series. And we wanna make it really, really high quality. We want it to stand out on YouTube. We wanna do this series right. But we need your help. We wanna know in the comments what YouTubers you think we should document. Big, medium, small. We wanna show you guys and find out for myself what it's like being them. The highs and lows of what it takes to be a YouTuber. Well, I guess we gotta make the series now. Let's do it. And a feature, right? And a feature. A feature too. You have that locked and loaded. <laughs> Heck yeah. We're doing it. We're no problem. <laughs> just, just, the, just a little old feature. Just yeah, a just little, a little. Series. It's, <laughs> fine. it's fine. We it's got fine. this. We yeah, got yeah. this. I'm not, I'm not sweating it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fine. More than 24 hours in a day, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, great. Kids, family, <laughs> yeah, yeah. features, doc series. It's fine. It'll be easy. It'll be fine. Yeah, if, if anybody watches the channel and uh, they're missing a Supreme sweater, uh, just let me know. Contact Ryan. <laughs> you guys should definitely be following Ryan if you're not already.